Why are Christians from all around the world praying for the peace of Jerusalem? Why is there a rise in Christians studying Hebrew, celebrating biblical feasts, and their Hebraic roots? What is God up to? Find out next on The Crossover. We'll be right back. For nearly 2,000 years, Jews and Christians have been divided. But now, God is calling for the healing of past hurts and the comforting of His people. Discover how God is prophetically uniting Jews and Christians across the world today on The Crossover. Here are your hosts, Mitch and Rosalie Jerome. There is a worldwide phenomena occurring among Christians as their heart for God grows, their heart for Israel and the Jewish people is growing as well. Perhaps it's because modern day Haman are arising and God is raising up watchmen on the wall for such a time as this. Isaiah 62 states, I have posted watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. They will never be silent day or night. You who call on the Lord, give yourselves no rest, and give him no rest until the Lord establishes Jerusalem and makes her the praise of the earth. One of the main purposes of the crossover is to alert the Jewish community and let them know that there's this growing group of Christians that love them unconditionally. They are following what God wants them to do, which is to love the apple of his eye. And today you're going to get to meet someone who's doing just that. I remember, Rosalie, when we f first got into the Hebraic roots ourselves is because we came a, into a group of Christians that were so zealous for their faith and their Hebraic roots, and they were wearing yarmulkes, the kippahs, they were wearing talits, they were celebrating the Sabbath. We weren't doing any of this. We were going to church. Good Jewish people, we were going to church. <laughs> And here were our Christian friends doing all this Jewish stuff, remember? Oh, I won't forget it. In fact, it provoked us to jealousy. We were thinking, what are they doing, doing our stuff? We, they were celebrating the Sabbath, remember? And uh, praying over one another and eating challah and uh, wine. and uh, Weekly parasha, studying the word for the week. Every Friday night, having nice dinners together. It really... An impact had impact and we started doing it ourselves it's like guess wait a second we're Jewish we should be doing this exactly there's even a scripture that talks about the job of Christians is to provoke Jews to jealousy and I got provoked actually and uh, I remember that I wanted you to put your hand on my head and pray Proverbs 31 over me and I prayed Psalm 1 over you, and now we do it now for the past how many years? 15 mm. years, and our children continue on, continue on and, and they, they covet the prayers, the, the Shabbat prayers. Uh, they actually call us from when, if they're out of town, and say, pray for us, it's Shabbat. We want our blessing, and uh, we mm. learned this. We got back to our own Jewish roots from Christians. Robert Stearns is a recording artist and a worship leader, a founder and executive director of Eagle's Wings Ministry, and he's the visionary behind the Day of Prayer for Peace of Jerusalem. Robert's also an author of two books, one, Positioning Yourself for an Esther Anointing, and also The Cry of Mordecai. Tell me, Robert, were you raised in a church and what denomination? I did. I was raised in the church. My extended family is Catholic and um, we came into a born-again experience through the Baptist Church, we were there for a while, and then uh, ended up in the Assembly of God Church. So um, was raised in different evangelical churches, but yes, I was raised within evangelical Christianity. So when you talk about a born-again experience, what happened? Well, I was very, very young when my parents came to faith, and so I kind of just, uh, came in on their coattails. When I was two or three, we left the Catholic Church, but then I came to a faith experience with the Lord when I was about eight years old, when I was very young. So what do you really mean by born again? I mean, babe, didn't you have a tough time when people kept talking about born again? Well, we never heard about that in synagogue. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. So explain to uh, those of us who are clueless what that means to be born again. Well, I just um, really understood that God's love for the world was manifest through His Son, Jesus, and came into a belief and an acceptance of Him as my Savior and Lord. 
you are known as a worshiper and an intercessor who hears from God. Talk to us about the importance of this intimacy with God. Well, I think that all of us are built with a desire to know God in our heart, and all of us are built uh, and programmed, as it were, with an understanding that there's something more than the natural and material world that we, we see and that we sense. And uh, I don't think there's anything special about me. I just think all of us, if we will open our hearts and open our spirits to hear from God, that God wants to speak to His children. He created us with a desire to know us, a desire to walk in fellowship with us. And if we'll open our hearts to Him, He wants to meet us and He wants to um, share His love and share His life with us. For our viewers who don't have a clear understanding of what Robert's saying, let's go to a praise and devotion moment so you can experience worshiping in the Spirit versus a mechanical rote recitation of words. Who sits on the Robert, since you're so involved with the Jerusalem Day of Prayer and Israel in general, is your teaching about Israel as a youngster from the Catholic and Baptist days different from your understanding today? Yeah. You know, I've thought about that question often, you know, trying to remember back to my childhood and what was my understanding regarding Israel or the Jewish people. I don't really remember being taught much of anything, either negatively or positively, about current day Israel or um, the Jewish people. Um, I think in my mind, uh, Israel and the Jewish people, I was thinking kind of more of Charlton Heston and Moses and Exodus and the historical Israel. I didn't really make a connect, nor was there a lot of teaching that I received about modern day Israel and the modern day Jewish people, but certainly that has changed and my life has become very linked and very involved with Israel in particular and the Jewish people worldwide. And what's interesting right now is we're seeing the Christians and Jews come together like never before. And we have some Christians that are very committed to the safety and security of the Jewish people and the Jewish people that live in the nation of Israel. Uh, I know and my wife and I included, we are Christians that will stand strong for the nation of Israel and stand in the gap for the Jewish people because we have a great, we have the heart of Christ for the nation of Israel and we will stand strong. And there are people that are being very vocal about the Middle East peace process, specifically the Israeli-Palestinian negotiations, knowing in fact if Israel is forced into these borders and boundaries, it's going to put them in indefensible borders. So the Christian church, those who have a great love and passion for the nation of Israel and the Jewish people are, are doing things at a level of, of intensity uh, that we haven't seen in many, many years. We are willing to stand in the gap and through this, Jewish and Christian people are developing a relationship that they never had before because of what is happening to the nation of Israel today. So let's move into Esther here. She was a woman then that had to go before the king knowing she could lose her life, Jewish lady going before the king to save her people. How does that apply? Who, who's the Esther in, to, in, in modern times? I think all of us are, especially now when we're watching Israel. And the us and is who when you say that to the camera? I think all the Christians and all the Jews who are believers, who have received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, and we're being put in a position such as Esther. And that position is, if I perish, I perish. I think the time will come when there will be a great persecution 
on Christians and Jews this alike because of the Messiah. And Esther, and we've, we've got to think that also before that position of taking um, your life at risk, that Esther prepared for it. And she was a vessel of purity. And I think that we as believers need to take that position first to go before the Lord and, and cause Him, uh, plea with Him to make us vessels of purity. And I think that a pure vessel is, is quite like the king of Persia that sees a pure vessel and has favor with the king. And I think that's how we believers uh, become a favorable vessel before God in that purity. And then we have favor with him. Now, when you look at Esther, she is willing to lay down her life for her, for her people. And we are being put in positions where um, all of you out there are, are helping us get in a position like Esther to lay down our lives in the position that we are as a, as a White House correspondent in the position that you are right now. Here again, Mitch and Rosalie Jerome. If you want to know what's going on in the world, you don't have to read the Times, you don't have to read the magazines, just watch Israel. God is using Israel as an anvil to shape the nations to His way. I've heard uh, that Israel is called the canary in the mine. Apparently miners would understand that, that they, in the old days they would put a canary in the mine and when they see the canary die, they know to get out of there that there's a gas leak. Uh, Israel is the canary for the world. Something happening bad to her, watch out world, it's coming to you next. Israel is God's anvil. What was the moment in time that got you so involved with Israel today, modern day Israel versus the historic Israel? So many Christians see Israel as important because Jesus walked there. They don't see the importance of Israel today, prophetic Israel. You know, I was in Israel in the early 90s for an extended period of time. And uh, while I was there, I was invited to a prayer service at the Western Wall, uh, sometimes known as the Wailing Wall or the Kotel. And as I was there at the wall and there were all of these uh, Jewish people praying, I sat there thinking, now who are they praying to? They're not praying to Allah. Uh, they're not praying to Buddha. They're not Hindus. They're praying to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And that's the God I pray to. I pray to him through Jesus. I've accessed that covenant of faith through Jesus, but I'm praying to Adonai, the Lord, the creator of heaven and earth. And these people have been praying to him a long time before I came along. And so what does that do to my faith? And what does that do to my relationship with these people, the Jews? And that was a pivotal moment for me that kind of started this seemingly never ending journey uh, into what it means to relate to Israel and the blessing of being grafted into covenant with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Please talk about this day of prayer for the peace of Jerusalem that you do in the first Sunday of every October and why and how our viewers should be a part of it. The day of prayer for the peace of Jerusalem is the largest uh, prayer coalition in church history dedicated and focused on praying for uh, the city of Jerusalem according to the scriptures. Psalm 122 and dozens of other scriptures, both in the Hebrew and Christian Bible, urge us to focus our attention upon that city. And so uh, what we're calling for, and now we have over 1,200 uh, Christian leaders and over 162 nations that are participating. We're calling that the first Sunday of every October would be set aside globally as an annual day of prayer for the peace of Jerusalem. Let's look at some other news of the day. Both Israeli and Palestinian authorities are trying to create a Palestine quite radio positive station reported that the PA has begun dismantling Hamas's special forces. The, the Israeli Peace Quartet Special Envoy Tony Blair urged Israelis and Palestinians to show you all know. We feel this is just an attempt to show that there is a lot of these missiles. We have to be prepared to see the amount of sadness that the people here are experiencing under the We have, in my view, to Wake up. Wake up. 
There is a cry in the heart of God. The cry for the land he calls his own. A cry for the people he created. There is a cry from the people of God in every nation who hear His voice, who long for His plans to be fulfilled. Who long for peace to come to pass. Psalms 122, 6 through 9 says, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls, prosperity within your palaces. For the sake of my brethren and companions, I will now say, Peace be within you. Because of the house of the Lord, our God, I will seek your good. Today, we are answering that mandate. Today, we are answering those cries. Today, we are joining together with millions around the world. This is the day of prayer for the peace of Jerusalem. The Crossover presents Biblical Art.
Welcome back to The Crossover. Around the world on the first Sunday of every October, uh, regardless of your theological positions on the issue, regardless of your political persuasions on the issue, can we unite and be biblical according to Psalm 122? We certainly have a biblical injunction and obligation to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And so that's what we're turning believers' attention toward and turning their hearts to. And we're really excited by the success and the growth that this prayer movement is having around the world. Why do you think people caught on like this? Well, I think there's a few reasons. Um, uh, I think spiritually people caught on to this because it's an idea kind of, of whose time is now. I mean, I like to think that it's an idea that was birthed by the Holy Spirit and that God has given and that God is really uh, encouraging people in. Uh, so I believe that there's um, a spiritual element to why it's had such great success. And then, you know, uh, naturally uh, or, or um, more logistically, Pastor Jack Hayford, who came on in the very beginning and helped launch this prayer movement, is one of the most respected Christian leaders in the world today. And his very strong affirmation and very vocal and visible support, I think, also made a tremendous difference for us in helping launch the Day of Prayer globally. To bring to that heartbeat center of the world something of a peace that alleviates the tensions, the hatred, the bombings, the torment, the peace of Jerusalem is a very focusable issue, and it isn't just a dream request. It's God's direction for us. With Reverend Robert Stearns of Eagle's Wings and Pastor Jack Hayford of the Church on the Way serving as co-chairman, the Day of Prayer for the Peace of Jerusalem has participants in over 100 nations from more than 100,000 churches around the world in what is now the largest Jerusalem-focused prayer movement in church history. Reading your bio on the CBN website, you stress the importance of Christians studying and grasping their Hebraic roots. Why is this important? Well, because we're admonished in word that it is the root that supports us, the branch, not the other way around. Uh, and though Christianity, of course, has gl grown globally and uh, far outnumbers uh, the Jewish people, yet uh, spiritually, um, Paul tells us we are the branch, the wild olive branch that's been grafted into the root. And um, I, I don't think you can know the God of Sinai, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of the patriarchs, if you're interpreting him through a, a Greco-Roman mindset. I really think you have to understand the Hebraic mindset of the scriptures, of the prophets, of the patriarchs, of the covenants. Um, God has revealed himself to mankind through the Jewish people. And so for to know God, we need to understand that context. And so I think it's vital that Christians um, really um, delve deeply into the roots of their faith, uh, not to in any kind of legalistic way um, put themselves under tradition or law, but rather that they can joyfully receive uh, the principles and the uh, timeless transcendent truths that God was speaking through things like the feasts of the Lord and the various um, aspects of Jewish culture. God says to Abraham, take to me a three-year-old heifer and a three-year-old goat and a three-year-old ram and a turtle dove and a young dove. And he took all these to God. And he cut them in the center. And placed each piece opposite its counterpart. But the birds he did not cut. And Jewish tradition says that the birds are Israel. And the birds fly. And the birds must fly with a message to the four corners of the globe to teach about this God of love and compassion and morality. But there are two birds. Not but after the destruction of the temple and we were wandering from pillar to post, we lost our sense of mission. Survival was so difficult we didn't spread that word. But you did. And then I began to understand that those two birds are you and us. 
with a united mission. A mission to go to the four corners of the globe, teaching a God of love and morality and justice and compassion, teaching destruction to jihadism. In closing, two things stand out for me. First, that Christians from over 170 nations are praying for the peace of Jerusalem. Even in the most remotest places of the world, they're there praying for Jerusalem. And secondly, I am humbled to know that there are Christians living in intolerant Muslim nations that are risking their lives praying for Jerusalem. It is really true that the scripture of God has placed watchmen on the wall, Isaiah 62. In the book of Esther, chapter 4, verse 14, it says, For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your father's family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to a royal position for such a time as this. If you haven't been praying for the peace of Jerusalem, we hope that you will join thousands across the globe the first Sunday of every October Step up to the plate. It's your time. I am very happy to hear about your idea to pray every October in every year to the peace of your Jerusalem. That's all for this week. Come back again next week as we offer our hearts and hands to reunite Jews and Christians through the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob on the crossover. Remember, these are prophetic times and God is at work. Shalom. Shalom. Join Mitch and Rosalie as they reach an ever-growing worldwide audience through the crossover. We invite you to become a crossover partner right now by calling the number on your screen. For your monthly gift of $30 or more, you will receive the Crossover Partnership Pack, which includes a DVD of today's program, a personal greeting and prayer message from Mitch and Rosalie. More information about the Crossover Project. As you continue to support the Crossover each month, you will receive a new Crossover DVD, plus a ministry report, and your name will be added to our healing room. Call now and join the growing family of Crossover Partners.